Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video we're going to be checking out something a little unexpected, that being this Transformers Studios series Bumblebee movie, Deluxe Class Unmasked B127 or Cybertronian B 2.0. This guy is essentially a repaint of the previously released B127, albeit this time with a head sculpt that's taken directly from the off-road Bumblebee. In my opinion this figure better matches what we actually saw on screen as I don't believe we ever actually see Cybertronian B deploy the battle mask and also the paint job is killer and finally Hasbro appeared to have in fact actually sorted the tolerances out on this mold. Third time round, we've actually got a pretty solid release. Now we'll start off firstly by taking a look at Bumblebee here in his Cybertronian vehicle mode, just as in the original review I did showcase the transformation from robot to vehicle. I thought it would be cool to showcase it from vehicle into robot. You can see that as ever this looks fantastic. If you've checked out my recently reviewed Cybertronian Wheeljack review, you guys all know that I am a sucker for these Cybertronian alt forms and honestly B127's vehicle mode looks absolutely fantastic. Now you can see in regards to sculpt, it is completely unchanged from the original version, albeit the colour scheme is a lot darker. It's almost like a very strong shade of mustard. You can see there we've got this really awesome metallic gold effect going on towards the top of the vehicle. Once again, that transparent piece of plastic and this really awesome yellow strip going through the centre of this. As we spin our attention here to the sides, you can see that darker shade of yellow plastic and the hubcaps also look really, really awesome. Of course, sadly, we still have the mushroom pegs, which as ever are an eyesore, but still I think the detailing to these actual Cybertronian wheels looks incredibly impressive. And then as we just spin our attention here to the back, you can see we've got some really, really awesome detailing there, which looks fantastic. Overall, it's a really, really sleek looking vehicle mode. Now to very quickly bring out a comparison with the previously released B127, straight away you can notice the stark difference in colour. The older release was a lot more vibrant when in comparison to this newer version and to be honest with you, the newer version, at least to me, is so much more accurate. This was definitely the colour scheme that we saw Beast Sport in that opening Cybertron flashback sequence and it really does beg the question as to why Hasbro did release this guy in the first place as of course Bumblebee in that Cybertron flashback scene never had the battle mask head sculpt like this guy and the paint scheme for the most part when actually comparing it to this is really really off so that is a shame but of course if you didn't actually pick up this original version then this one here is definitely going to be a vast improvement and honestly you'll probably be really happy that you actually waited out now turning to transformation of course we just want to come here to the top and disengage this entire roof section i would be cautious of the transparent tabs that we've got going on here for the front of the vehicle so just disengage that we can then take this backpack section hinge this here all the way until it does snap into place. Sadly, they didn't in fact actually make any mold refinements to the main body, so we still do have that massive backpack. But honestly, when we get into robot mode, I think he looks really, really awesome. Now we're going to want to take the feet, drop these sections down, bring down these ankle armor pieces. We can then separate here at the legs. We can then turn our attention here to this section and just take these wheels here, arch those sections there to the back, and then we can take this and in fact actually fold that within the shin region of Bumblebee. We can then take this panel, bring this section down, and you can see all of the joints are in fact incredibly stiff, and this will in fact actually tab there into place. And unlike the previous versions, it does in fact actually lock there, which is really cool. We can then come to this side, and of course repeat the same process. So take that, spin that there to the back, hinge the wheel so that it does in fact actually conceal within the shin, and of course take this piece, hinge this section down, and just snap that there into place as well. We can then disengage the arms here from the center of the torso. You'll then want to take this panel here, lift this section forwards, which should then allow you to in fact actually pull out the brand new head sculpt for this guy. So bring this section forwards, take these back panels, arch these backwards. You can see we've got two slots that these two tabs will in fact align with. So just peg them in there just like so. We can then open out the chest panel, collapse this piece down, hinge this there to the chest, pull the head sculpt down, and then we have the all new unmasked B127, fully transformed up into robot mode, and I'm pretty certain you guys will be able to tell straight away that this is in fact the superior release. This looks really, really impressive, and the actual paint refinements made to the head really do give me similar vibes to when we got that recently released Revenge of the Fallen side swipe, as it looks so much better when in comparison to the original off-road Bumblebee sculpt. So, bringing Bumblebee in here for a closer look, you can see in regards to detail as well as paint, especially where that face sculpt is concerned. I think it looks awesome and definitely a lot better of a paint job when in comparison to the off-road beers. We've now got this really awesome gunmetal grey going on for the mouthpiece in comparison to the metallic silver, which whilst looked good, of course, wasn't as accurate as this. You can see the entire head section this time around has also been painted in that very similar shade of yellow that we actually saw when in vehicle mode. Honestly, it's almost borderline gold. You can see that's really, really awesome. Very nice looking details to this actual helmet piece and they have in fact actually gone the extra mile to stamp on the Autobot insignia there in the 
the center, which looks awesome. You can see some nice gunmetal highlights there towards the side sections of Beast's head. And I also think the eyes too have been painted really nicely. Now, as we spin our attention to the rest of the figure, it is exactly the same as the previous version. So honestly, there's not much to comment in regards to this. It's just the color. Sadly, they still haven't in fact actually painted all of the armor pieces on him. So it would have been awesome if we could have gotten some yellow highlights here for the shoulders and of course here for the thighs. But other than that, I think it's still a pretty solid looking sculpt. You can see here for the torso, some very, very nice looking details. I also love the sculpt work that we've got underneath this section, of course, just to make him look a little more authentic to what you would see from the movie. We've got some nice silver gunmetal highlights there for the thighs. And then as we just spin our attention down to the lower section, the feet also have been painted really, really nice. And we've got a nice gunmetal here for the tip of the toe, that same metallic yellow, as well as some gunmetal there for the center of the toe. And of course, sadly, we still have that massive backpack, albeit this time with the refinements made to the joints, he can in fact actually stand a lot better and does in fact actually pose so much nicer. Very quickly running through articulation, B127 has of course got a ball joint here at the head, albeit slightly limited, so this can look left to right, as well as tilt side to side slightly, and due to transformation, you can also use this hinge joint to in fact get him looking up, which is pretty awesome. You can also see some very nice looking sculpt work going on here. The arms are on ball joints, so it can hinge forwards, backwards, out to the sides, and very stiff I may add. We also do get a very stiff rotation here at the bicep, 90 degree bend there at the actual elbow, sadly no wrist rotation, albeit we do in fact actually get a waist rotation. The legs can kick forwards that far, which is great, as well as back to that far, despite the huge backpack. They can kick out to the sides. Rotation here at the thigh, as well as a 90 degree bend there at the knee. And finally, the foot can in fact pivot forwards, backwards, as well as rock side to side on a ball joint. So overall, B127 is definitely pretty articulated. Now he does come with one accessory, that being his stinger blaster. So you can still make him go and firing away at those Decepticons. This is the same sculpt that we've gotten previously, so you can see this time around, it's got a really nice gunmetal section there and some really nice metallic silver going on towards the front of the barrel. And as we just very quickly bring in the previous B127 here for a comparison, once again, you can truly see the stark difference in regards to the shade of yellow that they've used on this new 2.0 version. Now, in my opinion, I'm not entirely sure about yourselves, but I actually do think this to be a closer match to the movie when in comparison to the original release. I just think this very bright yellow is just way off, especially considering the light in that scene was darker. I do just think that this version looks so much more awesome. And you can also see the differences here in the head. So of course, there we've got the new Unmasked version, and there we've got the Masked version, which to be fair, I actually think is an awesome sculpt. And I do wish that maybe Hasbro could have in fact actually given this guy two heads, as they are merely just on ball joints. So we could have in fact actually seen this here, done in a very similar color scheme to what we've got going on here. But no doubt we'll see a fourth version of this in the future. And if I just very quickly bring in the off-road Bumblebee here for a comparison, just so you guys can see the refinement made to the actual paint. Once again, I think it looks so much better here for B127 2.0. I just think the paint to the actual helmet looks fantastic when in comparison to the tint that we've got going on here from the plastic. It definitely does give you KO vibes, whereas this one almost has a premium finish to it. I just think this here looks really, really awesome. And overall, I'm definitely glad to add this more accurate version to the collection. And here for a very quick Cybertronian Autobot comparison, here we've got B127 compared next to Bumblebee Movie Optimus Prime as well as Wheeljack. And you can see that he scales really nice with these guys as well as actually looks really really awesome once again i love the muted color scheme that we've now got going on with this 2.0 version and the unmasked head sculpt truly is the icing on the cake as of course this was in fact how we actually saw him in that very brief flashback sequence so with all that being said that just about wraps up my review here for this transformer studio series bumblebee movie deluxe class unmasked b127 i would really love to know down in the comment section below on what you guys think of this particular figure is it one that you guys actually plan to add to your collections did you guys in fact actually think hasbro would reissue this in a darker color scheme, of course, with this new unmasked head sculpt, or are you indeed more than suffice with the previously released masked B127? I personally think the color scheme, as well as the head sculpt on this look killer, and in regards to overall accuracy, I just think this guy here looks so, so much better. Of course, be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thank you for watching.